During the Edo period, people who needed or who wanted to travel across Japan mostly did so by foot. To this end, a number of paths, roads and highways were established. The most famous of the Edo period routes are known as the Go Kaido, or in English, the Edo Five Routes, the Five Highways, or the Five Routes, depending on your desired translation. These are the Tokaido, the Nakasendo, the Niko Kaido, the Oshu Kaido, and the Koshu Kaido. Um, this is gpscycling.net, and it has nice maps of a lot of the, the routes which existed in Edo period Japan. So from tomorrow, I'm going to be walking the Niko Kaido, which I have opened here. So the Niko Kaido stretches from Nihonbashi, where all of the Edo five routes begin, to Niko, specifically Toshog in um, Niko City, uh, Tochigi Prefecture. I will be walking the route over seven days. Uh, the first day I'll walk from Nihonbashi to Soka in Saitama Prefecture. Uh, from there I will continue to Sate, which is also in Saitama Prefecture. Um, the next day I'll continue to Koga, which is in Ibaraki Prefecture. Then on to Kogane, which is in Tochigi Prefecture. Then to Utsunomiya, also in Tochigi Prefecture. Then up to Imaichi, also in Tochigi Prefecture. And finally to Toshogu. So as well as showing the route, I thought I would show you what I'm taking with me on my walk on the Niko Kaido. So we have two guidebooks. We have Chanto Arukeru Niko Kaido. Oshu Kaido by Yagi, and this is my map basically. Um, it has a map of the Niko Kaido transposed onto a modern map, and I'll be using this to, to walk the route rather than a GPS map because I don't think my uh, mobile phone's battery will last, especially on the longer days. Um, yeah, so this is, is the best. Uh, paper version of the route that I could find. It has historical information and other interesting things in, but th this book is primarily for the the route. Um, the, the route in here stays accurate um, to history as much as is possible in the modern day, so I like that book. But we also have this this book, which is Yonju Dai Kara no Kaido Aruki Niko Kaido Hen by Uchida. Um, now obviously this is for 40 year olds and above, but uh, I liked the book. Now, it's useless as a map. It splits the route into day sections for, I imagine, the, the standard busy Japanese worker, and they go from a station to a station. And this makes the maps Mm, not very desirable uh, if you want to walk the route properly because they take you around sites which aren't on the route they take you from station to station which aren't on the route and generally because this is aimed at uh, what a tourist walking the route might want obviously we're all tourists if we're walking the route anyway but you know in places where there isn't necessarily a large amount of sites on the route. It will take you off to show you some additional sites. But I liked that it had a lot of pictures, so I didn't have to look up any of the sites on route. Um, I could just look here and find things which looked interesting, and anything which wasn't in here, which I saw on the other map, I could Google. So there's my two guidebooks. There's a third book that I thought about taking, which was the Nihon Shichizu, uh, which is a wonderful little book for those interested in Japanese history. But I decided not to take it because the it has a lovely map, like the GPS map I showed you before, 
that maps all the routes of Japan, but the scale is, uh, or most of them I should probably say, the scale is n not up to par with what we're, what we're doing. It's effectively useless for what I'm going to be doing. But this is a wonderful book for those interested in maps, you know, trade maps, route maps, everything. I'd recommend getting a copy for anyone interested in Japanese history. So, we have camera equipment, so we have camera bag, you know, lens wipes, charger, etc. And this is all for uh, the DSLR, uh, the Nikon uh, D5 300. I have a lens, oh, here it is, and the spare the bigger lens. Now, this is a cheap camera I got a few years ago but um, I want to document this well so we have the camera. And we have the GoPro which this video is being filmed on and the GoPro obviously you want some mounts so we have the head mount we have a sort of botched to get a bag mount here um, it's it's the cap mount with a with another little thing on it to make sure it's horizontal when it's strapped to a bag. So we, I guess it goes on the strap like that, doesn't it, and it stays horizontal. Um, so we might use that. And then we have things, micro SD to USB, we have, I can't remember what all these GoPro mounts are called, we have this one, the little, um, it's like a selfie stick, but also becomes a tripod. And we have uh, three batteries um, with it. And I have the multi charger somewhere here as well. There we go, the multi battery charger. We'll have a lot of wires. I'm not going to show you all of those, but we do have a lot of wires. Um, oh, I forgot to put this away. There we go. Just put that back in the case. Now, I bought this Hohem gimbal as well for the trip. The three batteries won't last long in a day. But this gimbal was rather cheap, um, had excellent reviews. And the wonderful thing is it works as a power pack from here for your phone, or you can charge up here for your GoPro as you film. So I thought that was sort of essential. I don't know how much I'm going to be filming each day, but. Uh, if I want to film a lot, that's essential. And that's in its own little case. Um, now, I only have two micro SD cards with me, so we're taking the computer. But that's also coming for work purposes. I need to do writing and other such stuff. Um, and then we have the external hard drive, because this is basically full. So. <laughs> um, I need to put the videos on something. So we have the external hard drive here. Um, that's sort of it on the electronic front. Um, we have some other things which I'll be taking. We have a Goshuincho, and that's to collect the stamps from um, temples and shrines, and it's in my nice little Goshuincho case. Um, I'll probably get through a few of these because I'm going to go to a lot of temples and shrines. Then we have what can usually be described as medical supplies. So these are things which keep you cool when you have the flu. I'll be using them to cool down in the 34, 35 degree temperatures next week. But these are nice. Uh, essential probably. On the same front, I have Gatsby uh, wipes. I can't remember what they're called. These are wipes and uh, they keep you nice and cold uh, when you wipe them on your body, which is nice. I also have some medicines, my and paracetamol, Tylenol. That's just in case of headaches, colds, etc. Uh, a lot of the camera equipment will go in this small bag, just a shoulder bag. We also have a main bag over here. Sorry, there's some drinks in the background, I apologise. The main bag contains five days worth of clothes. It will also fit the camera, the medicine, that sort of stuff. On the bag, I've also connected a bear bell. That's for 
when we get to Nika. It's currently sellotaped, so it won't ring because it's not needed in Tokyo. I need to scare away the bears if they're alright. And this wonderful clip, which allows you to clip pet bottles to your bag so you can drink on the go. And I think that's about it, to be honest. I mean, there's there's a coat, there's, you know, all the wires, as I said, pocket Wi-Fi. But I think that's the end of the main stuff. So, uh, basically, all the clothes are packed. I'm going to bag this up and put that in my bag. And then I'm off to Tokyo today, planning to start out tomorrow. I'll try to upload a video at each stage of the trip dependent on my internet connection. Thank you for watching this video and please enjoy the other videos that I make during my journey along the Nikko Kaido. There is some bibliographic information contained in the description of the video. Thank you and goodbye.